Hi, I'm Dr. KP McKee with A Spacious Place Creativity and Spirituality Center. We know that you all are spending a lot of time at home right a now. A lot of time at home right now. <laughs> and this is a time that maybe you can do some healthy at-home cooking and involve your children so that we're building skills in cooking and cleaning and using our produce and maybe all of our produce. So, <laughs> so to begin, we're going to pull our hair back and we're going to wash our hands. Hey, Dr. KP McKee here. We're going to be doing a lip macking meal <laughs> for today. And to continue the terrible puns, it's going to be variations on a box theme. Get it? <laughs> so most of us have a box or something like this around our house, some brand or other, and um, it's generally very popular with our children, and we can make it even more nutritious and delicious, and also we can personalize it for each person. So uh, these are some things that you might want to add into it, like um, onion, tomato, garlic, a green or red bell pepper and we'll talk about how to add these in in a bit and then also you can add in maybe some salsa uh, you can do spaghetti sauce as well uh, these type roll tail tomatoes this is the HEB brand and they're just as good and uh, maybe some spicy beans and then for toppings um, old tortilla strips you know those ones that are down in the bottom and are all broken up or some broken up uh, club crackers and maybe some panko breadcrumbs. But we're gonna start with some other kind of peppers and these are green chilies. We're gonna do poblanas and there's more than one way to do that. So I'm gonna start with that now. You can definitely use canned, use canned chilies like this that you can find in the store, but you can also make your own. And these are poblano peppers that I have roasted here. And what you do is you can either put them on the stove if you have a gas stove, and they just keep turning them till they're nice and black like this on the outside for peeling. Or you can put them under the broiler. And then you want to put them in a bag and seal it up for at least about 15 minutes. And now we're going to just uh, peel off the black, blackened part on the outside and get to this yummy stuff inside and make sure kitchen smell delicious when you're doing this. Mm -hmm. You want to get most of this off. You don't have to get every last little bit. And now we are going to do surgery on it. <laughs> All right, so uh, a cut across the top here, and then down through the middle here so that it opens up like this. And then we're going to cut this top part off and uh, take the seeds out. And then we're just going to chop it into pieces. And so we'll meet you over here at the stove in a minute. Okay, so children need fat in their diet, so this butter is important, but we are going to be adding extra cheese, so I cut it back to about two tablespoons uh, for, this is three boxes, um, but you can go with what your folks like. Then I'm gonna add in my peppers, because they taste really good when we saute them in the butter before we do anything else. So we're gonna let that Get nicely sauteed and melt all the butter. And then we're gonna add our milk. And I have also cut back on the milk a little bit. Uh, I have two thirds of a cup here for the three boxes. And that is because um, another thing you can do is add a little bit of plain yogurt after you've mixed all of this up and it gives it a little bit more body. Put this in here and turn down my temperature to a low simmer. And I'm gonna start adding first the packets that come with the recipe. 
And as your children are learning to cook, this is a good one to start with. A uh, wooden spoon is good here because it doesn't conduct electricity and it doesn't conduct heat, I guess that's what I meant. I guess it doesn't conduct electricity either, but that's not really so important here. If you're getting electric shocks from the stove, call someone <laughs> Yes, and if it's an electric it. shock, <laughs> unplug it. Yeah. that might be an issue. And uh, everyone has their own taste with mac and cheese, it seems. Some people like it really soupy. Some people like it uh, crunchy. So uh, the nice thing about this is that you can kind of personalize and do it the way everybody likes. Unless your family's half and a half like ours is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you can always stop with this part and then bake yeah. for some and not bake for others. Apparently there was an article in the Wall Street Journal about how families are arguing over food these days. <laughs> I wondered about that. Yeah, I'm concerned they weren't eating together enough before to argue about <laughs> to be a way for um, siblings to work together too. One can sprinkle and one can stir because you um, want to avoid lumps with this. You can also use a whisk, yes. especially if you're not stirring in things ahead of time. And what kind of whisk would we need to use if we're using nonstick? One that doesn't conduct electricity. <laughs> yes, also not one that'll scratch it. Yeah, not a metal whisk. <laughs> yeah. And the whisks are kind of magical because even if you get lumps, you can often get them back out. Mm -hmm. They're like the undoers of mistakes. And you can see this is starting to get thicker now, but we're going to add even more to thicken this a little bit more by adding, because we're doing a Tex-Mex themed mac and cheese, we're going to be adding Mexican cheese. But if you wanted to do uh, something with a bit of spaghetti sauce in it or even just Italian cheeses and you could top it with some fresh tomatoes and some basil. You could uh, use mozzarella or provolone or Parmesan cheese. Asiago? Oh, yeah. Really, whatever your taste in mm -hmm. cheese is, these boxes give you a good start, but I like to have it a little bit more robust than this. So we're gonna just add cheese and just a little bit of time and let it melt until I get the consistency of the cheese sauce that I want. Stirring is important because as you can see, it will follow you around. Mm -hmm. String cheese. Yeah. Oh, and that's another cool thing about if you use the mozzarella or um, provolone, some of those others, they, uh, they're they stretchy. And what could be more fun than eating stretchy mac and cheese? All right, that's all in. And then I'm going to add just like a quarter cup of plain yogurt to this. That's a good question. We probably should look that up. All right, so this is where we would have added in anything we wanted. You know, we sauteed the the peppers that we have, but this would be where you sauteed your garlic or your onion or whatever else you wanted. So I'm gonna turn the stove off now and I'm gonna add our noodles. Are you gonna add any hot sauce? Um, well, we can add hot sauce, but mm -hmm. I was gonna just do some over the top for chisel. Um, okay, so uh, this is Nessie. This is Nessie, and uh, we're gonna just add a little bit of these in at a time. I made this ahead of time so it's a little stickier than per usual. And you can add your salsa or your hot sauce in here and bake it or just serve it that way or you can drizzle it over the top and let everybody do the amount that they would like. And since you have turned off the stove for this part, this would be a time when the children could come and help do it. Or you can even take this off the stove, put it on a trivet and 
as long as we're aware of the heat that's still coming off of it, uh, they could do it that way too. If we want, we can finish off our mac and cheese by crunching up some old tortilla chips or crackers and mixing them either with the kind of cheese that you used or with some butter and spreading them over the top of either your one to be baked or your one your, to be served. Or you can drizzle with some hot sauce for this Tex-Mex style green chili mac and cheese. And you have two variations on a box scene.